Two months after the India-Pakistan partition, Kashmir remained independent. What is the Kashmir conflict all about? In 1947, the countries of India and Pakistan came into existence. The partition decided the fate of millions, as various state rulers had to choose which country they would belong to. But the people of Kashmir faced an uncertain future. Maharaja Hari Singh, the Hindu ruler of Muslim-majority Kashmir, managed to keep the region independent for two months. He did this by signing a standstill agreement with Pakistan and sending a similar agreement to India, which favored continuing discussions. But that changed in October 1947, when the Maharaja confiscated armaments from Muslims who were formally conscripted into the British army. The weapons were distributed to local Hindu village defense forces, and this provoked an uprising supported by the Pashtun tribesmen from Pakistan. The tribesmen were acting without Pakistani approval. The Maharaja sought military assistance from India, but India's governor general contended that it would be dangerous to send troops to a neutral state unless Kashmir first offered to accede to it. To suppress the uprising, the Hindu ruler's army along with the RSS, the Hindu extremist organization, organized the pogrom against Muslims in Jammu. There is a dispute over the number of Muslims that were massacred and could be anywhere between 20,000 to over 100,000. This massacre was part of a widespread violence in the subcontinent in which reportedly over 20,000 Hindus and Sikhs were also killed. The Hindu ruler signed a temporary arrangement ceding Kashmir to India on October the 26th. Pakistan disputed the Maharaja's accession, claiming that he had no right to sign an agreement with India when a standstill agreement with Pakistan was still in force. On October 27, 1947, Indian troops landed in Kashmir to fight the rebel forces and the Pashtun tribesmen. This led to the first India-Pakistan war. During the war, India's then Prime Minister, Jawaharlal Nehru, promised a referendum. The fate of the state of Jammu and Kashmir is ultimately to be decided by the people. The pledge we have given not only to the people of Kashmir, but also to the world. We will not and cannot back out of it. A little over two months later, India referred the dispute to the United Nations. A resolution was passed on August 13, 1948, asking both nations to withdraw their forces. Once that happened, a referendum was to be held, allowing the people of Kashmir to decide their political future. But troops were never withdrawn, and the referendum never happened. On January 1, 1949, a ceasefire was agreed upon, and Kashmir became a disputed territory. The ceasefire line became the de facto border, splitting Kashmir in two. Over the next 70 years, India and Pakistan fought three wars over Kashmir, making it the most militarized zone in the world. In Indian-administered Kashmir alone, India maintains around 600,000 troops who have committed human rights violations, like rape, torture, and enforced disappearances, which still continue today. The number of people killed in Kashmir are estimated to be from 50,000 to 100,000. Pakistan also maintained a heavy military presence in the part of Kashmir that it administers. A report by Human Rights Watch describes Pakistan-administered Kashmir as a land of restrictions on political rights and civil liberties. A poll published by think tank Chatham House stated that nearly half of the people living in Indian and Pakistani parts of Kashmir want their disputed state to become an independent country.